Hi everybody, this is Matt. Welcome back to another issue of this old pilot. So yes, you have seen this before. So this is one of the joys, and I'm being sarcastic here, one of the joys of owning and operating an experimental aircraft. So let me uh, tell you the story on it. And I'm probably going to do a couple of, uh, of clips that are, you know, trying to inject a little bit of humor into it. So pardon the bad camera work, but it's just me and, and my phone. So for those of you that know what you're looking at, this is the backside. This is the, well, this is the gearbox area of the Rotax 912 ULS. Now, as you recall from an earlier video, I had to pull it for a 600 hour inspection and no big deal. It went in uh, to a shop, it got taken care of and it came back. Biggest problem is I began to notice uh, just a couple of hours ago uh, that things weren't right. And, and that's, that's one important thing that I want to get across to you when it comes to if you own or thinking of owning an experimental aircraft or you're flying any kind of an airplane, never take anything for granted. Always do your pre-flights, always check and double and triple check sometimes on your mechanical stuff, especially with an experimental because an experimental aircraft, if you don't have a lot of time in them and you don't know the ins and outs, that can be bad. Um, thankfully, I've got about 400 hours in this bird, and so it's pretty easy to discern when things aren't quite right. So let me kind of cut to the chase and tell you what was going on. I was noticing my wide open throttle uh, settings increase. The RPMs increased instead of staying back where they should be uh, for this type of airplane, the type of prop that's on it, everything else. So they began to increase. And then also um, my shutdowns got to be a little bit on the vicious side. So I was next to an oil change anyway or within at least uh, 15 hours of one. Went ahead, pulled the magnetic plug, uh, found two pieces from the gearbox. Yeah, and the gearbox had only been on there for like 60 hours. So everything comes back off, the prop, everything, gearbox gets removed. Uh, it is a good thing to have specialized tools to be able to do that. And so gearbox is removed and gearbox will be shipped in a couple of days back to the shop and hopefully they can tell me uh, what's wrong with it. Now, I know what's wrong with part of it because I can visually see it, uh, three things in particular. So we're gonna talk to them, have a conversation about how to make it right. And so whenever it comes back, I want the gearbox to be done right. The other thing that I'm planning on doing is I'm planning on getting a different propeller. The propeller that I'm running right now is a tried and true standard, but they're a little bit on the heavy side. And heavy propellers tend to damage uh, gearboxes, especially large propellers tend to damage it. Is mine large? No, I've got a 64 inch prop on it. Uh, but it's heavier than I would like it to be. A friend of mine on the field has an E-prop, and that thing sounds like butter. He gets great performance out of it, and so most likely the next time that you see this airplane, it's going to have the gearbox on it, and it'll have an E-prop. So probably going to do a different video on that, on how I'm setting up the prop pitch and everything, and, and the testing process and the performance dynamics that we're getting out of it. Uh, but the main thing is 
seen what the shop is willing to do about the gearbox because like I said only been on for uh, 60 hours and then yeah there you go Bob's your uncle as they say so that's what we're looking at this obviously is messy with oil it's got to be cleaned up I've already done a little bit of cleaning but right now after all that work I'm gonna get out of the hangar I'm gonna go home I'm gonna take a shower but anyway, I just thought I would let you know what's going on uh, with the airplane. Because if you have an experimental aircraft that you own, welcome to owning an airplane. So it's not as cheap as a lot of people tend to make it uh, sound. They're like, oh, it's great. You never have to do anything and you're going to be able to just uh, put gas in it and go. No, that. That's not the way that it works because what you do all the time, and I'm gonna shift my hand here real quickly. There we go. Sorry for the hand in the picture, but that's the way it goes. One of the things that you get really good at is this right here, learning to safety wire. And if you don't know how to safety wire already, um, now's a good time to go to an A&P or take a class and learn because safety wires and inspecting them are very critical. And you'll also notice that I've sealed up the back end here so nothing, uh, no kind of foreign material can get in and even where my fuel pump is. It's tied up really tight on there with a, with a little uh, Ziploc baggie. And this is just the way that that I do things because I don't want anything to get into that engine. So if I'm doing maintenance, like up here on the air filters, these are going to uh, need to be cleaned uh, pretty soon. Uh, it's, it's the same thing. Plug every hole and don't let anything get in because in hangers like this, you have birds and all kinds of things, you know, plus wind can pop dust right into those intakes. So seal it up, it's a good idea. Anyway, I know the video's gone a little bit on the long side, so everybody have a great day, take it easy, and we'll talk to you later.